Hey folks, this clip is brought to you by the fastest growing sports book in Tennessee, Zen Sports. And told A to Z, T N, A T O Z, T N to earn a welcome bonus that gives you 5% cash back on your total betting volume for your first 15 days of betting. That is Zen Sports. So Tennessee played Texas A&M and uh, it was a bit of a dicey one. <laughs> um, came out, you're down at halftime first game of Josh Heupel's time at Tennessee that he has won when trailing at halftime. Then also the first game of Josh Heupel's, I believe Josh Heupel's entire head coaching career where he won scoring less than 30 points. Joe Milton plays poorly. The wide receivers play poorly. Your running game plays awesome. Your defensive line plays incredible. And Tennessee walks out with a victory. Zach, was your kind of thousand foot view from uh, watching that game? I felt pretty confident going into the game. Like weirdly, I wasn't nearly as nervous as I am for most big Tennessee conference games. I was way more nervous for Florida and, and South Carolina because I did. I just didn't think Texas A&M was that good. I, I believed in their defensive front, but offensively, I didn't think it would be as bad as what we saw on Saturday. Just A&M was pretty terrible across the board outside of that first drive of the game. I just don't think they're a very good team. I don't think Jimbo's that great of a coach. I don't think he has the, the the quarterback that he wants to kind of do what he wants. And who knows who's calling the offense. We were talking about it before the show. That marriage between Bobby Petrino and Jimbo Fisher always seemed like it was going to be a weird fit. Egos get involved, and goodness, both of those guys we know have egos. So who knows who's calling what down there. So that, that part is kind of what I expected. I think Tennessee's defense made it worse uh, the way that they played, especially the defensive line. Didn't expect that from Tennessee's offense. Uh, they actually ran the ball better than I thought. I thought they'd be able to pick things up in the passing game because A&M blitzes so much, and they they kind of let you get in these one-on-one -on -one situations on the outside. I kind of thought this would be the game that we finally saw some of those downfield shots, and we almost did. I mean, there were a couple to Romel Keaton that you know, he dropped one wide open. Luckily, Tennessee did score on that drive. They got bailed out by a penalty on that particular play. There's a couple of pass interference calls that didn't get called that maybe Keaton makes a play. Um, I still believe in Ramel Keaton. I just He's going through a rough stretch. Who knows what's going on? Mm. You just never know. But uh, some of those shots were there. They just didn't execute them. Uh, that, that, to me, was the surprise. Then they managed to run the ball. I mean, Texas A&M stuffed them a few times. But, man, Jalen Wright, that dude continues to just get better and better and better. Like, as good as Dylan Sampson is, as electric as Sampson is, I feel like you can't take Jalen Wright really off the field because of his ability to pick up those extra yards after contact. I mean, he just does not go down easy. Every single carry, he's fighting for those extra yards. And and to be no bigger than he is, he's not a huge running back. I mean, he's decent size, over 200 pounds, but he's not a Marshawn Lynch out there. Uh, it, it's impressive to watch it. Honestly, I like the way they keep those three guys fresh, but it's I feel like Jabari Small should be getting the, the least amount of carries at this point. Nothing against Jabari Small. He's a tremendous player. He's gonna be a, you know, statistically one of the better running backs that's played at Tennessee, but there's just so much there more that, that Samson and Wright can really do. So do, kind do of hear, what we saw from Wait, do you, do you hear that, Zach? It's that blue tick coonhound. Oh because Jalen Wright's a dog. That's a dog alert. It I is. had to bring it back. I had to bring it back up. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you you got to be, you just got to get fired up watching that guy run. I mean, when, when he oh. gets hit, like he gets hit after he's, you know, three yards beyond the line of scrimmage and it turns into a 15 yard run. How can you not get fired up? The offensive line gets fired up. I mean, it's, it, it's an element that, that has been fun. It's, it's stressful as it has been to watch Tennessee's offense this season and the, the passing game kind of being out of sorts. The running game has been a joy to watch. So it was Tennessee. It didn't surprise me that Tennessee won the game, but it's just the way that they won. I think surprised everybody. A absolutely. Uh, even <laughs> it's especially surprised Josh Heupel because uh, there was a, a video that I, I retweeted uh, that somebody posted after the game and it was him uh, greeting his kids there on, on the sidelines. And he, he hugs his daughter and he's like, you never seen anything like that in your life, have you? <laughs> Says something like that to her, uh, and then he came into the post game, and he was like, "Oh, I haven't been involved in a game like that in years." And it says something like that. I mean, he it, Josh Heupel's more surprised than anybody, probably. 
it was a weird, weird game. And man, the the comments are going crazy. Thank you to everybody who's who's tuning in. Uh, Ernie says go balls, go balls. Derek says GBO, uh, GBO, of course. Uh, the, man, I just going through here. There is just so many. Well, we're gonna try to get uh, to the comments. Um, but uh, yeah, this this game was unlike anything that you've seen from from Josh Heupel. And it was really just something to behold the way that this thing went because I, I tweeted this out before we came on here. Tennessee is a hard-nosed, run-first, defense-heavy team with Josh Heupel? What's happening right now? It's football season, and it's time to switch to Zen Sports, the fastest-growing sports book in Tennessee, changing the bonus game with their cash rewards program. When you sign up for Zen Sports with code A to Z T N A T O Z T N, earn a welcome bonus that gives you five percent cash back on your total betting volume for your first fifteen days of betting. And if you have friends who bet on sports, share your Zen Sports referral bonus code with them and you will earn 3% of their betting volume for their first six months of betting on Zen Sports with no cap on how much you can earn. So what are you waiting for? Stop wasting time and money on other sports books when you could, when you could be earning real cash rewards with Zen Sports. Download today on the App Store at ZenSports.com. And your wallet will thank you later. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-889-9789. Terms and conditions apply. Must be 21 or older in Tennessee to bet. That is Zen Sports. Go download it now. I feel like I'm living in the damn Twilight Zone. Um, that, it was wild, wild to watch. And, and maybe, you know, Texas a and a weird, a weird school with a weird team, weird, you know, would you consider the yell leader guys mascots weird mascots weird traditions i guess it makes sense that you played a weird game against it but i also think this is how tennessee is going to win going forward like this this has to be the formula we uh we were having this discussion before we came on here but you know you, you've you brought up zach that uh some commentators on tv were saying like well tennis Al alabama's offense is better than Tennessee's offense. Tennessee just can't get any offense going. Tennessee has like the number 30 ish offense in America right now. Uh, they just aren't scoring, but they're moving the ball 250 yards rushing in that game, 230 right against South Carolina. This is just, it's just not happening the way that everybody thought it was going to happen. That's the only difference is that it's all the yards are coming on the ground. And then you're having trouble finishing when you get into the red zone, when you get, you know, down really when they get the like, the opposing 40 yard line, it seems like things just like lock up. Something happens right there where just everybody loses it. I, I don't know what's happening and why that's kind of the cursed area for Tennessee right now, but it is. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's just weird, but Hey, here's the thing. You're five and one period. You, you got that W in the win column and that's what matters. And, and you're seeing the emergence of some guys who, you just got to be so happy. James Pierce, obviously, he was my dog alert last week. James Pierce, he he deserves it. Honestly, he deserves it again. Let's just the two dog alerts here. Dog alert number two. James Pierce, dude, is brutal. He brutalized Max Johnson. Lived in the backfield. What what was that stat? It, it was, uh, I had it on Twitter. Let me see if I can bring it up. Um, that showed just how often Tennessee was in in uh in his back. But here it is. Max Johnson was pressured on 25 of 39 dropbacks. That is 64.1% per pro football focus. AM has never had a pressure rate that high since PFF started tracking this stat in 2014. The dude was so like using the, the matrix with some of the, oh. the uh the throws that he was getting off to avoid sacks and I hate it for like Omar Omari Thomas. He got robbed of a sack because Max Johnson somehow while falling backwards was able to keep his knee an inch off the ground and fling the ball towards the line of scrimmage. Incredibly dangerous, but the dude was fighting for his life all day long. It was uh incredible to watch. And that could be something to watch going forward to Alabama too, because they've had some of their own offensive line issues that Nick Saban talked about today. But that I mean, that was the difference in the game. Like when was the last time the defense was 
you know, really the difference in a game like that. Like, there's been games under Hypo where the defense played well, right? Like LSU, uh, Clemson, Kentucky, Vanderbilt, those games last season. But this was a game that's like the defense won the game. It wasn't just, yeah. you know, a compliment to this explosive offense that you saw. And I don't know. I, I took some joy in that. I know a lot of people are complaining. We've seen a ton of that on Twitter and Facebook and social media, right? About the way that Tennessee's winning and the lack of offense, which is crazy because they're five and one. Like you said, I tweeted on uh, Twitter the other day that we've only watched Tennessee lose three games out of their last 19. Like, when was the last hmm. time they've gone through a stretch like that? They've had several games that have kind of come down to the wire over the last year and a half. The Pittsburgh game last season, the, the Florida game, which shouldn't have last year. Obviously, Alabama, you've had a, you know, the, the Texas A&M game. You've had a couple of these games where typically those are games where we just brutal losses. We get to see these just bat breaking, horrendous losses. And the last time the three losses Tennessee's had, we kind of saw them coming like within the game. It didn't go down to the wire. We knew Georgia, uh, South Carolina, Florida. We kind of saw it coming in the fourth quarter, knew what was going to happen. It's really been since Ole Miss in 2021 that Tennessee's had one of those just devastating last second losses. And they just used to happen like five times a year. So I know it's not going like the way we all thought it would go this season, but at the same time, I think we all still have to really appreciate what's happening right now. The fact that Tennessee's finding a way to win in the SEC, it's not always going to be perfect. I mean, it's not like Josh Heupel's offense was always going to be this like cheat code that you just generate points no matter who's back there. I mean, I think that whole narrative of, plug and play is out the window at this point it's very obvious that Tennessee lost the first round right tackle they lost their their quarterback that was a third round pick probably would have been a higher pick if not for the ACL the Boletnikoff award winner Cedric Tillman Byron Young who's tearing it up in the NFL for the Rams right now had a sack against Josh Jobs ironically uh on Sunday so a ton of talent that yeah that's that's hard to replace and not to get too far off the rails here, but I think maybe some of these players, maybe a Dante Thornton came into this offense thinking, I'm going to go there and I'm going to be Jalen Hyatt. Well, we heard all the stories about the work Jalen Hyatt put in last season. Dante Thornton's looking like Jalen Hyatt in 2021 at this point, yep. where all the wide receivers are, kind of. And you just you don't just show up and be Jalen Hyatt. Like You got to put in the work. You got to stay late. You got to put hours and hours and hours into this, or it's not going to happen just because you play for Tennessee and for Josh Heupel. 